Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Pokemon Go. So in today's episode, we're gonna go over everything that has been updated, everything we interview all the beta testers and haven't talked about on the previous video. So anything that was covered on the previous video won't be said here. So it's a good thing to do, watch both videos for you to get all the information. So let's start with the lure patch. As you guys know, Lure Patch was added on this update, and Lure Patch lures Pokemon to a Pokestop for 15 minutes. As you guys can see here, it costs 80 coins, but this Lure Patch works for all the players around the Pokestop. Now guys, if you're just thinking about your own self, it's better to use Incense, because Incense can be used anywhere and it will lure Pokemon to you for 30 minutes. This way you get a longer period and you get more Pokemon all to yourself. Now the interesting thing about Lure Patch might be that if you're on a team, each team member can use a Lure Patch every 15 minutes and you guys waste a lot less coins. So we don't know how this will work yet, but for now it's better to use Incense on your own. Since it's hard getting all of the beta testers together, for now there's rarely no use for Lure Patch. Now many of you have asked me about the daily defender bonus. Now guys, this was a great addition because before we had no interest on in going out to gyms and placing our Pokemon there. There were hardly any experience to be gained and it was not worth the effort. But now the daily defender bonus is really a good one. Check this out guys, for every Pokemon gym that you have a Pokemon placed on that is owned by your team you will earn 500 Stardust plus 10 coins. Now coins, I must remind you guys, that is for the in-app purchases. So it will help a lot if we can earn free coins. Now this is limited to 10 gems. So if you have 10 or more gems, your cap will be at 5,000 Stardust and 100 coins. Now this is a 24 hour cycle. So let's say it restarts every day at seven in the morning. If you do collect your star bonus on let's say 10 o'clock, you will only need 21 more hours to wait. So no matter what time of the day you do collect your bonus, it will still have a constant 24 hour cycle. So you might log in, collect your bonus, and it says in two hours you have it available again. So once a day, you'll be able to collect this defender bonus. Another thing many people have asked me is if you need to be the gym leader in order to get this bonus. And no guys, as long as your Pokemon is on a gym, even if it's the weakest one, you will still get the defender bonus. This is very nice, especially considering the max level gyms can hold more than 20 Pokemons. So more than 20 players will be able to get this bonus. Now it's limited to 10 gyms, so it's good to team up and get your team going. Well, as I've warned you guys from the previous video, we now have a transfer button. Once you do transfer your Pokemon to a professor, you can no longer take it back. So it's the same thing as releasing, but the good part here is you actually gain candy from transferring Pokemon. Many other beta testers have reported that you only get one candy for transferring a Pokemon. Now this is because they only transfer Rattatas and easy Pokemon to find. If you do transfer harder Pokemons or more evolved Pokemons, you do get more candy. Now even though this is permanent, it's gonna be a good way to clear your empty space and also to get even more candy and help power up and evolve your Pokemon. So let's see how power up and evolving is working and what percentage bonus are you getting from those Pokemon. So once you do click the power up button, you're getting about 9% CP and 3% HP bonus. So it is increasing a little bit, but guys, the more you power up your Pokemon, the more it costs to power up again. And also, it is limited to your player level. So you might reach a cap in which it's gonna say and warn you, you cannot level up anymore and you need to get your character to a higher level. So this actually works really well if you remember the early Pokemon games you needed to have gym badges in order for a Pokemon to respect you. This way, you can only have regular Pokemons around your player level. You cannot power up just the same Pokemon over and over and get a super strong Pokemon all of a sudden when you're still a lower level. 
So this is actually a good system. Well guys, in some cases, it is better to just save your candy, do not waste them on power-ups, and just evolve your Pokemon before you start powering up. Because a lot of the Pokemons only require 15, 12, 11 candies for you to level up. And this way, they will gain almost double the CP. So if you do put into consideration, powering up for those easy to find Pokemons actually are not worth it. So just save them and then evolve later. Now you all might be wondering, how do I get candy and how do I get Stardust and how much of it do I get? Well guys, candy can be acquired by catching Pokemons, which will usually give you one candy for the easy Pokemons to find. But if you do find second evolution Pokemons, those will give you more candy. We do have to remember here guys, as you can see from the image, the candy is related to the first evolution of a Pokemon. So as we can see here, we have a Machoke, but he requires Machop's candy. So even when he turns into Machamp, he's still gonna require Machop's candy. So guys, if you do catch a Machoke, you will earn 10 Machop candies all at once. So catching a Pokemon will not always just give you one candy. Hatching Pokemon is the same way, but in a way, it gives you more candy. If you hatch a stronger Pokemon, you will get even more candy from the same Pokemon. And transferring, as you know, we've talked before, you can also get candy this way. Now, Stardust is a little different and even more important because Stardust can be used on any Pokemon. So save up your Stardust and use them on the Pokemons that are worth it. You can gain Stardust from catching Pokemon as little as 50 Stardust to catching a Rattata and as much as almost a thousand Stardust for hatching a strong egg. Also guys, daily bonus will give you the Stardust as we talked on previous messages. With this update, it's also made easier for you to find and catch Pokemons. Because now, we have a 20 meter interval between Pokemons. Before, we can only find Pokemons at around 50 meter intervals. So now, with the 20 meter, it makes it easier for you to find a radius and catch your own Pokemon. And these intervals can go up to 200 meters away. So you can see Pokemon very far away and still at very short intervals. One of the last great additions for this update is the new badges. Guys, we have many badges and most of them were added for gym battles and gym prestige and keeping a gym and defending. But there's also new badges for specific Pokemon types. So there's going to be an actual badge for how many fire, water, grass and all types of Pokemon you own. So this is going to be easy to keep track of how many of each type Pokemon you're finding and also guys know which are more common around you, which one you want to search for more. So this is going to be very fun. And the last very cool thing about this game, it seems that all Pokemon have the original Game Boy sound. Except of course Pikachu, which actually says Pikachu. So that's very fun. We actually thought everyone was the same, but Pikachu seems to be the different one. So guys, please subscribe to the channel, please support us, we'll be bringing the most up-to-date information from all of the beta testers, all for you guys on a very simple video. So I thank you all, and train on!